Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Andy Corson Petrie, and I lead the um, Mobile Core Network and Services Research Team uh, in BT Applied Research. And I'm delighted today to be introducing Professor Ning Wang from the 5G 6G Innovation Centre at the, the University of Surrey. And Ning is a long term collaborator with BT Applied Research. Uh, on the uh, NGCDI project, amongst other things, and, and topics such as next, next generation networks, intent based networking, automation, and of course, uh, network slicing. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, thank you, Andy. Okay. So basically, uh, I uh, um, uh, thank you for for uh, for this uh, great uh, opportunity to uh, for me to let's say discuss with you or, or share with you our uh, let's say activities um, uh, in, uh, about 5G network slicing and resource management uh, research topics. Uh, so for uh, um, uh, previously we uh, together with uh, Lancaster University I also uh, delivered the intent based network management, uh, which is uh, technically also linked to this talk, um, but this talk is more specific uh, to the 5G uh, environment. Okay, uh, so uh, basically, I will uh, uh, start with some uh, general introduction about uh, 5G network slicing, including what we have been doing on uh, uh, 5G network slicing at Surrey uh, at the 5G 6G Innovation Center, and then I move into uh, a few topics, um, including the AI-driven resource management in network slicing, and also a, a, a most recently emerged sort of topic about client or user intent driven network slicing adaptation and handover. And towards the end, I will uh, also mention uh, uh, a few items about network slicing in the environment of uh, multi-stakeholder or interoperator environment, especially um, with, with regard to the invasive uh, challenges. Okay. So uh, presumably, uh, uh, 5G uh, network slicing has, uh, uh, has been quite familiar to, uh, to everyone. So it includes uh, this kind of a tailored uh, resources and capacities uh, that can be used for different application scenarios with a heterogeneous requirements. So in, in, in the, if you look at the end-to-end, -end, uh, let's say, um, 5G system, it consists of typically different uh, network segments like a RAN, like um, uh, a transport network, as well as the core. So that is what when we talk about end-to-end -end, uh, 5G network slicing within an autonomous network operator, uh, then we need to carefully uh, look at how resources and capabilities uh, can be uh, uh, virtualized and allocated to different parts of the network in order to, uh, let's say, fulfill the end-to-end -end, uh, um, capability. So uh, assuming everyone uh, is familiar with the, these 5G terminologies like SMF, uh, UPF, etc. So, so that is why we mainly look at some typical, uh, let's say, network, uh, 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 service templates uh, in, uh, in that 5G network slicing, such as URLC, EMBB and MMTC, even though uh, for the moment um, uh, it, it looks like uh, the, the most advanced, uh, let's say, deployment of uh, uh, 5G slices, uh, EMBB, uh, supporting uh, mobile broadband um, uh, applications. So at Surrey, we have been, uh, let's say, uh, uh, developing uh, the 5G core as well as its uh, 5G network slicing capability over the past, let's say, uh, let's say uh, five years. OK, so we started our uh, um, uh, test bed uh, uh, activity on 4G plus. Uh, but over the uh, past three, four years, we uh, uh, we keep uh, working on the development of um, uh, our 5G core network, uh, 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 um, strictly uh, following the uh, 3GPP standard uh, up to release 16 uh, for the moment. And then uh, on top of that, we introduce the uh, the capability of, uh, let's say, uh, 5G uh, slicing uh, in terms of both permanent uh, uh, um, provisioning of uh, static slices and also on the fly creating uh, new slices. Okay, so if you look at this diagram, it shows the uh, our uh, uh, general 5G network slice environment. So at the top, it, con uh, it consists of this kind of business user portal that allows uh, different 5G clients to express uh, their, uh, let's say, a requirement um, or, or SLA sort of uh, target, uh, which will be, uh, let's say, uh, accommodated uh, by uh, a certain network slice, uh, which is here. Uh, for the moment, uh, we have been uh, mainly uh, uh, supporting uh, the EMBB scenario for uh, broadband, mobile broadband um, uh, applications. Uh, but over the years, uh, these uh, core network with uh, slicing uh, capabilities have been used in both uh, uh, 
uh, European Union uh, research project, as well as uh, UK national uh, uh, 5G testing networks uh, for different uh, application scenarios, uh, such as the integration of um, uh, satellite uh, communication capability in uh, in 5G uh, 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 by taking a uh, um, satellite link as a backhaul. I will talk about this later on, as well as using the 5G core network. Uh, for supporting different uh, vertical applications. So uh, um, back in 2019, we uh, uh, this, uh, 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 let's say, sliceable 5G core networks was used uh, in, for instance, in DCMS uh, um, funded uh, 5G testing project for smart uh, manufacturing. So we work with, um, uh, let's say, uh, Bosch uh, and uh, uh, Mazak in Woodshare. Uh, for supporting 5G enabled uh, um, industry operations, uh, including both machine oriented operations like preventive uh, maintenance, as well as, uh, let's say, staff training uh, based on augmented reality uh, use case scenarios. So, some of the uh, use case scenarios, um, uh, especially with uh, mission, mission critical, uh, let's say, application, we also deploy. Uh, let's say specific uh, mobile edge computing functionalities. Uh, uh, if necessary, such kind of Mac uh, can be also shifted between the core side and also um, to the mobile edge, uh, depending on the application requirement. So at that time, uh, we, we didn't have the, uh, let's say, the end-to-end -end capability of slicing, especially uh, due to the lack of, uh, let's say, for instance, RAN uh, for supporting URLC. Uh, um, uh, applications. So that is why our main contribution up to now in terms of 5G slicing is mainly at the core network. So which is the, the, the main topic uh, of this talk. Okay. So and also looking at our own uh, contribution to the 5G network slicing, especially on the fly creation of slices, uh, basically because, you know, um, 5G, uh, one of the key features of 5G is softwareization and virtualization. So that is why uh, many uh, uh, 5G, let's say, functions, including UPF, are uh, instantiated by uh, uh, through virtual machines. And that is why it takes some time to instantiate, uh, let's say, uh, virtual resources, in, uh, including the, the the VMs as well as the virtual network functions. On top of that, in order to, uh, let's say, uh, activate uh, uh, the actual slice. So according to our testing, uh, basically upon the request from the user uh, from the user side, uh, basically we we can achieve about, uh, let's say, uh, one and a half minutes. Uh, let's say, uh, duration for uh, spin out a, a brand new network slice uh, on the fly, uh, according to our own implementation. Uh, okay, so, uh, and then uh, if we look at the end-to-end -end, uh, network slicing across the whole 5G network, as we just mentioned, uh, it contains different segments like a run transport and core. And as we can see, uh, different than the management or, uh, of individual local environment uh, could carry uh, could carry different objectives. So apart from the common objective to fulfill the end-to-end, -end, uh, let's say, uh, service level objective like delay or bandwidth or throughput, uh, let's say, um, objectives, then individual uh, environment may have their own, uh, let's say, intent or, uh, or, or optimization objectives. Uh, for instance, on the RAN side, we may have, uh, let's say, a spectrum efficiency uh, or, uh, or interference avoidance. While at the transport part, uh, basically, we can look at the load balancing and utilization of, um, let's say, uh, 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 bandwidth resources uh, across the whole network topology. And also at the 5G core network, we also look at, for instance, the optimization of uh, VNF utilization, uh, virtual machine uh, usage, and also energy efficiency. Well, energy efficiency should span uh, uh, across multiple uh, segments. So that is why if you look at the end-to-end -end service assurance uh, across different slices, we not only look at the uh, the common objective of, of fulfilling the end-to-end -end SLA, but also taking into account specific environment, uh, let's say, um, uh, optimization objectives. So for the moment, uh, uh, at Surrey, we mainly start from the core network because we, we, we do have our own core networking, uh, uh, let's say, um, uh, implementation, uh, which allows us to carry out extensive uh, research activities uh, um, but this will be further expanded to, uh, let's say, transport network as well as on the RAN side. We've got other teams who are not involved in NGCDA project working on both uh, other, uh, let's say, um, uh, network environments. 
Okay, so uh, basically the first talk I'm going to talk about is this kind of auto scaling for 5G core network slice assurance. And uh, in fact, my colleague Abdul Razak, uh, um, uh, coming from 5G IC, also delivered a, a, a more detailed uh, um, uh, technical talk uh, uh, several weeks ago on this topic. So I'm I'm going to uh, uh, going to just uh, briefly introduce this work for those who did not who have not yet uh, uh, be aware of this um, uh, um, uh, this uh, this piece of study. So the the the, the motivation is as follows. So we take uh, the end-to-end -end delay as an as an example. Okay. So in order to achieve the end-to-end, -end, uh, let's say delay. Uh, 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 delay uh, assurance. Basically, we need to, let's say, uh, have this kind of uh, delay budget across different segments, like uh, uh, the RAM part, the transport part, as well as the core part. Because, as, as I mentioned, the, 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 the 5G core currently is used, uh, uh, has been, uh, let's say, uh, mainly relying on a software-based uh, environment, including UPF. So that is why we want to pay specific attention on how virtualization or softwareization of 5G core has any impact on the data plane or user plane performance. So a few years ago, we did this kind of experiment uh, based on uh, OpenStack, uh, which was uh, which which uh, used to be our open uh, open source platform. But now, in recent years, we have uh, uh, gradually moved to a more container-based or Kubernetes-based environment. So at that time, we carried out some sort of um, uh, let's say performance testing uh, against bare metal uh, 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 instantiated uh, 5G forwarding plane uh, versus virtual machine uh, instantiated uh, forwarding plane. So if you look at uh, uh, these two, uh, uh, let's say figures on the uh, uh, bottom left, as you can see, uh, with virtual machine based, uh, let's say forwarding engine or UPF, uh, basically we have less control or higher degree of uncertainty in terms of assuring the end, to, not end to end, but per hop uh, based, uh, let's say forwarding delay. Okay, depending on whether uh, how uh, the, the the utilization of of the uh, of the virtual machine. Okay, so we compare between the scenario of bare metal, that is BM, uh, and also uh, VM uh, distributed. Uh, that means basically each VM is is based on separated hard piece of hardware. Okay, and and the last one, which is the most interesting one, that is co-located VM. That means we build multiple virtual machines on com uh, on top of a common physical machine. Okay, we also use DPDK uh, trying to, let's say, uh, boost the data plane uh, performance. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, DPDK does not help if uh, multiple virtual machines are hosted on a common, um, uh, let's say, physical machine uh, without uh, uh, traversing the, 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 the physical nick between uh, between the hardware. So the story basically uh, uh, motivated us that uh, we need to look at the, uh, the the resources on the virtual machine uh, um, on the VM side in order to determine the auto scaling requirement for uh, UPFs. Okay, depending on uh, the, the end to end delay requirement as well as the utilization of the virtual resources on those VMs. So uh, basically, because everyone knows uh, the traffic demand in the user plane is very dynamic. So that is why in order to, uh, let's say, um, uh, assure this kind of end-to-end -end, uh, service assurance uh, for uh, not only um, uh, for different network slices uh, with the specific uh, delay budget, we need to uh, enable some automated uh, uh, scaling, scale out of UPF within the core, uh, within the core network. Okay, so of course we can have multiple options of doing this, uh, either based on, for instance, uh, threshold based. This is very uh, straightforward. You just define, predefined threshold. If the utilization or the delay performance uh, has violated this kind of um, uh, uh, threshold, then you can, uh, you can, let's say, add new, let's say, virtual UPF in order to boost the performance. And if the uh, the utilization is, is low, and then you can certainly, um, let's say, um, uh, let's say switch down some of the active UPF in order to return the corresponding resources uh, back to the uh, back to the uh, resource pool. Okay, but in order to enable such kind of automation, uh, this is a good opportunity for us to uh, leverage on machine learning based, especially based on uh, uh, um, deep reinforcement learning, uh, which is a very um, let's say sophisticated uh, tool for handling a dynamic environments. So. 
uh, for this um, purpose, we we uh, designed uh, what we call a soft actor critic algorithm uh, to uh, enable this kind of automated scale in scale out um, uh, operation for uh, 5G UPF. Okay, uh, and and also the target is uh, we try to minimize uh, the, the 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 resource uh, use in virtual resource utilization, uh, but trying to guarantee uh, the delay budget. Uh, which was allocated for the core uh, part. And the one uh, big challenge is uh, uh, the, the, the trade-off between, uh, let's say, um, optimality or service assurance versus stability, because you can't afford to very frequently reconfigure your network in order to uh, achieve such a goal. Okay, so that is why uh, basically we compare different solution options, including the threshold-based uh, approach, uh, uh, um, uh, another, uh, let's say, DQ, which is another AI-based uh, uh, approach, uh, completely driven by the optimization requirements, but without taking into account, uh, let's say, st system stability, uh, et cetera. So, so we comprehensively uh, compare the system performance uh, uh, based on this is, I think this is based on the uh, EMBB level slice. And then we can see how this kind of dynamic scaling and scale out uh, operation can achieve, uh, let's say, uh, uh, the end to end service assurance. If you look at this um, uh, uh, top left diagram, which is about the statistics uh, of uh, delay variation, uh, delay uh, uh, and, uh, violations uh, 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 from different uh, approaches. So as you can see, by simply defining a less a threshold, uh, basically that's, that is not sophisticated enough. So that is why you can see a lot of a high ratio of, uh, let's say, violation of the end to end delay requirements. And also, uh, if you don't uh, uh, take into account the, uh, on the entropy part of the, let's say, uncertainty or prediction, then if, even if you use, uh, let's say, DQM based uh, auto scaling, you may still perceive some let's say, violation of the end-to-end -end delay. Okay, so this is from the service assurance point of view. And we also look at, uh, let's say, the utilization of uh, VNF. Okay, so the good feature of, um, uh, let's say, using uh, um, threshold base without any AI involvement is it can achieve very stable, uh, let's say, configuration, like this uh, black uh, errors. This, this is the threshold based auto scaling. That means uh, it's less sensitive to the um, uh, to the environment. Uh, but the good of uh, advantage is uh, basically to uh, can achieve a very stable configuration. That means during a certain period of uh, time, you don't need to reconfigure uh, the number of UPFs to support. While the, the other two AI based approaches, you may have uh, you may uh, have uh, you may perceive that there are more frequent uh, reconfiguration of the number of uh, UPFs um, scaling and scale out. And then if you look at the uh, the comparison between DQN based approach and our own proposed SAC uh, uh, auto scaling by taking into account the reliability, not reliability, stability requirement, as you can see, we can achieve relatively more stable reconfiguration as compared to uh, uh, the other approach, which may introduce very frequent uh, uh, change of um, number of UPF involved, even though uh, 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 the, the, the overall end-to-end uh, -end assurance is even not as good as what we have proposed. Okay, so this is just a snapshot uh, about how we can use AI to uh, automatically drive the uh, auto scaling operation in 5G core network. We just use um, uh, a simple uh, example of uh, 5G core network in EMBB, uh, 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 let's say, uh, um, uh, slice scenario. We we, ha we have also done uh, the uh, the uh, the experiment with the other two slices uh, like URC and um, and um, uh, um, uh, MMTC, uh, we observed similar results. And I think my colleague uh, Abdurazak has already uh, delivered uh, his talk, including all these uh, full results uh, in the other talk. So I don't want to uh, spend more time on this. OK, but if you have, if you have any further interest, uh, please let us know and we can share our uh, more detailed uh, documentation. OK, so moving from the core network part, uh, then we look at the end-to-end -end orchestration across uh, different network segments in terms of the uh, managing the resources and functions across different slices. One key 
uh, let's say technical challenge is the time scale of optimization or reconfiguration of the resources or functionalities at different network um, uh, uh, segments. So intuitively, uh, we can observe uh, if we look at the dynamicity or uncertainty, uh, it seems to us that um, the run part has the highest uncertainty or dynamicity because of the user uh, movement or mobility, uh, etc., which is less, let's say, predictable as compared to the aggregated sort of traffic uh, treatment in the, in the transport and 5G core. So that means if we try to, uh, let's say, uh, um, uh, launch this kind of end-to-end -end orchestration, we may need to take into account different, uh, let's say, time scales uh, for different parts of the uh, network in order to, uh, let's say, harmonize or coordinate the optimization across different, uh, 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 let's say, uh, uh, sub-environments. Okay, so this, we, we are currently doing this, but um, uh, uh, these are just some uh, ideas we'd like to share with our colleagues from BT just to uh, to synchronize our, let's say, research ideas before even we go uh, go to the um, uh, go to the actual, uh, actual research with, uh, with some concrete results. Okay. Uh, the other um, uh, uh, issue is the uh, is the synchronization of optimization between computing resources and communication resources, uh, even based on a common uh, uh, 5G network slice. We also discuss with uh, BT colleagues in the context of NGCDI project. Okay, so in terms of let's say service assurance or traffic optimization or resource optimization in general, okay, we need to uh, uh, let's say have a look at the dynamicity of computing resource utilization versus communication uh, um, uh, 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 resources, uh, um, uh, and by uh, and by taking into account the common feature and dif different features. Okay, uh, one typical example is the uh, service function chaining. Okay, so in that case, uh, in terms of let's say SFC across a whole uh, across the end-to-end -end, uh, 5G slide. As you can see, we not only take into account the, the traffic distribution across the the end to end path, but also uh, uh, we need to have the awareness about how, uh, let's say, um, virtual network functions or their VM uh, uh, virtual machine utilization. Uh, and then we need to take into account the holistic load balancing, uh, let's say, um, uh, requirements across not only. Uh, bandwidth resources, but also computing resources in order to build uh, the end-to-end -end service function chain uh, across uh, certain uh, 5G um, uh, network slices. Okay, uh, and another challenge is uh, this kind of, um, let's say, a local violation of uh, let's say uh, delay budget, as we uh, previously uh, mentioned, because we are looking at a heterogeneous uh, network environment, uh, and each network segment, like 5G RAN, transport, or core, may individually contribute some delay budget. So that uh, this local delay budget can constitute the all the overall end-to-end -end, uh, delay assurance requirement. And in that case, we may have this kind of local violation of the uh, delay budget. For instance, in that case, uh, we have the, uh, we may, for instance, uh, experience a problem of, for instance, uh, uh, over-utilizing uh, virtual resources in the core so that uh, the packet delay become, uh, has violated its local uh, let's say budget, uh, but in that case, we may have uh, several options to deal with such kind of problem. One is to solve this problem locally without escalating this kind of issue to the rest of the network. Okay, so that will uh, uh, require some local, let's say, recovery or uh, uh, mechanisms to, uh, let's say, um, uh, to confine such kind of problem within the 5G core without, uh, let's say, uh, um, rely on the, uh, let's say, uh, on other parts of the network uh, to stay, uh, to stick to the original uh, service target. So in this case, for instance, if something goes wrong with the, uh, um, uh, with the 5G core network for a particular network slice, do we require, for instance, uh, let's say, reduced uh, or uh, delay performance, and, uh, well, reduce the delay from the transport now, uh, from the transport uh, uh, part in order to compensate the violation of the um, of the uh, let's say five uh, G core. Well, this can be this has to be handled at a global level of end to end orchestrator. Uh, part. Uh, so at this moment, we don't have any solution, and we cannot tell which one fits 
uh, let's say, a, a, a better solution uh, in terms of the global optimality and as well as the control, uh, controllability uh, from different uh, level segments. So these are some, let's say, open, uh, let's say, technical issues uh, we've got in mind, uh, which we'd like to, let's say, share with, uh, 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 let's say, uh, BT colleagues in terms of, let's say, uh, identifying uh, some, uh, let's say, um, common research issues um, in terms of uh, orchestrating uh, network resources and functions across different, um, uh, let's say, uh, network segments. Okay, and then the next item is a uh, client-driven uh, uh, network slicing adaptation and handover. So in the context of NGCDI, uh, we have already uh, uh, done some, uh, let's say, experiments, uh, not necessarily in the 5G environment, but in, for instance, in the uh, in alternative, uh, uh, let's say, network environment like SRV6 uh, uh, routing. So the key idea is basically uh, um, uh, some of the let's say adaptation or handover between slice between 5G slices can be driven even by the user or, or, or the clients. So such kind of observation has recently uh, let's say been published in the in this uh, in this paper attribute communication standard magazine uh, just a, a couple of months ago. And this is the first uh, let's say uh, published material talking about the possibility of inter slice handover which can be typically driven not only by the network side, but also on the UE side. Okay, so uh, that paper basically also, uh, let's say, um, uh, uh, raise a few, uh, let's say, general requ uh, uh, requirements and challenges. And the first two are quite, let's say, easy to understand. That means, for instance, a UE can only switch to a compatible slice if that slice is in the list of the allowed Network slice selection assistant information and SSAI. Okay, so it cannot be uh, that on the fly. For instance, um, you can uh, let's say uh, switch to an, uh, a completely brand new slice without any uh, prepare, uh, pre preparation. Uh, pre uh, uh, preparation. Okay, and also uh, not all types of network slices uh, can have such kind of feature, and this is probably more applicable to uh, some, uh, let's say, um, uh, network slices like EMBP or uh, V2X network slices, where the end users or clients may have some specific intent or or, or behavior which may trigger uh, the necessity of uh, slice uh, switching uh, uh, within a 5G network. And from the user plane point of view, uh, there is no existing mechanism for supporting make before break. So uh, for um, for conventional, let's say, handover uh, between base stations, that's it, it is well known that we need to, uh, let's say, uh, adhere to this kind of principle. You need to uh, get on with the new, let's say, anchor point before you release the old, uh, let's say, base station in order to achieve seamless handover. Uh, from the user point of view. But unfortunately, this kind of handover between slices has not yet been uh, realized. Uh, uh, um, um, people started to talk about this kind of make it before break inter slice handover uh, in 3GPP, but this is in the very, very early stage. Uh, stage. Okay, so if you look at typical, let's say, scenarios or use cases that uh, uh, involves inter-slice handover. So apparently we can envisage uh, some, uh, let's say, scenarios where the network initiates such kind, such kind of um, inter-slice uh, uh, handover. Uh, for instance, if you perceive the high utilization of available resources on one slice, and then you may shift or offload uh, user traffic uh, to another compatible network slice in order to achieve, let's say, inter-slice uh, 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 load balance. Uh, this is a typical scenario uh, um, of uh, uh, inter-slice handover triggered by the network side. Okay, of course, there could be other stories like uh, network slice uh, may stop, uh, for instance, for a premium service uh, because a user is running out of his credit. Okay, so then you may want to, let's say, downgrade uh, uh, this kind of traffic uh, um, uh, to a sort of, let's say, best efforts uh, like um, uh, uh, network slice. Of course, we haven't, uh, uh, not we, but uh, the authors have not yet taken into account, for instance, the argument of network neutrality uh, implication to such kind of, uh, <laughs> um, let's say, scenarios. But more interestingly, uh, we may one also wonder whether 
users or clients could also play a role in influencing the uh, the handover between network slices. So in that paper, basically, it has been discussed about user perceived quality of service deterioration so that um, the user may not be happy about the performance of the current slice and they they can actively request to switch to a new another slice uh, in order to maintain their original uh, service performance and this is one of the examples mentioned in this uh, in this work uh, and also uh, um, uh, 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 there's another possibility which is about user intent but this intent is not necessary about the unhappy experience about the current performance, but it could be driven by the application requirement, which I will um, uh, mention after a while. Okay, so if you look at uh, these kind of typical scenarios of user or application intent. Uh, well, the uh, let's say um, example is video and uh, live uh, uh, real time live video analytics. So we are looking at this kind of uh, example. For instance, if you are uh, having this kind of live surveillance. Um, uh, application uh, 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 by looking at the, the overall traffic uh, condition. So if the if nothing happens, then you can just rely on a very, let's say, top level view about whether everything is okay or not. But in case of an incident, then the, uh, 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 the, 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 the user may want to immediately zoom into a particular object. Okay, so in that case, the, for instance, the, the processing of this kind of, uh, let's say, uh, live stream video could be, uh, uh, could, uh, be shifted from the traditional, uh, from the, let's say, cheap uh, cloud-based uh, let's say video processing to edge in order to let's say uh, boost the the uh, the capacity of video analytics and also provide uh, let's say um, uh, let's say quicker view or or, more, or closer view from uh, uh, by the users. Okay, and also we may also uh, look at the uh, the change of video resolution. For instance, if you are looking at the uh, the general situation, probably uh, HD would be adequate okay but if you really want to zoom into a specific object then the cost the bounding resolution might be uh, up to let's say 4k or even 8k which may demand substantially higher bandwidth requirements so it is not for sure whether the current network slice will be able to support this kind of change of the context of user intent okay so the other solution uh, uh, scenario is user mobility okay so this might not be um, uh, triggered for the different sort of uh, uh, let's say video resolution requirement but it is um, uh, about uh, let's say uh, specific for instance, content prefetching or content processing on behalf of users uh, by using uh, mobile edge computing facilities if users is on the move then there might be some handover uh, between network slices or between at least between Mac servers. OK, if uh, let's say the Macs uh, uh, from, uh, let's say, uh, different network slices are not at the same location. OK, uh, and most interestingly, uh, we also look at this new application, which is about uh, immersive media. OK, so this is uh, uh, called a holographic teleportation application or holographic telepresence. So you wear this kind of goggle, okay, and then because of this, uh, 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 let's say, extended reality application, which allows you the, uh, what we call, six, six degree of freedom, okay, so that means when you wear this goggle, you can move in a virtual, in a virtual scene, okay. So if you have seen a hologram far away, you can walk towards it, Okay, and then that hologram size will becomes larger and larger as if you are actually walking towards a physical, uh, let's say, entity in front of you in the physical space. So, but uh, when you uh, have this kind of virtual environment, okay, uh, and when you are actually uh, uh, far away from that virtual hologram, then again, the video resolution does not need to be that high, and we are looking at probably tens of megabits per second at most, so that you may have a fairly good experience. I will look at the uh, looking at that uh, uh, virtual hologram. Okay, but if you want to have a closer look, then you tend to move towards that hologram, and then the size of the hologram in your field of view will become larger and larger. At some time point, the resolution has to be increased. Otherwise, you you will see a lot of let's say big pixels or or, or this kind of tiles, which does not give uh, the uh, um, uh, let's say nice user experience. So in that case, if you turn up this kind of resolution level, okay, the corresponding bandwidth will also uh, uh, substantially be increased. 
Okay, so this is uh, uh, the, 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 the gap between these two scenarios is one is could be tens of megabits per second, and the other could be several hundred megabits uh, uh, per second, according to our uh, environment. Okay, so that means uh, basically it's not like a conventional video, like uh, you've got, uh, let's say, HD versus 4K, where the bandwidth requirement difference is not that big. OK, but if you look into this kind of more immersive media, the story could be ex um, completely different. So we can certainly provision very, uh, let's say, um, uh, uh, very, let's say, luxury network uh, slices uh, to support uh, this kind of, let's say, close look, uh, uh, um, uh, let's say, uh, scenario. Uh, but the principle is, even though there could be some slice that can support such kind of bandwidth demanding uh, applications, but these kind of resources are very precious. OK, so so that means this should be only used if needed. OK, so that is why, depending on where the, the user behavior or intent, then we may need to provision different slices to enable, let's say, remote uh, let's say, or, 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 or remote viewing of, um, of objects versus close viewing of uh, uh, objects. And then depending on the user intent or, 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 or behavior or mobility pattern, then we can then the, the system can automatically adapt uh, the, the resolution of the, uh, of the immersive video, which will further trigger the adaptation of the network treatment. OK, so when we look at specific options, how the application or UE could trigger network slice switching, we can conceive the following three, uh, let's say, scenarios. OK, the first is manual switching. That means you just simply click, click. The user will need to click to manually switch the resolution, for instance, from, uh, let's say, HD to 4K or even 8K. But this is quite naive. OK, so uh, there's nothing. Uh, uh, basically, that's not some uh, something user friendly. We also think about the user device triggering. That means if the hologram in your view, view, uh, uh, um, uh, field of view has reached to a certain size, then the device will, will automatically trigger the request of changing resolution or changing our uh, uh, or switching the network slices in order to uh, cope with the increased uh, bandwidth requirements. Okay, but the shortcoming is although this automates the procedure without the uh, uh, intervention of the user, but the other thing is the device does not have any knowledge about the resource usage of the corresponding uh, network slice. So although the user issues such kind of intent, it it does not need it does not always uh, um, uh, it can always, uh, it cannot be always, let's say, fulfilled if, especially if the network uh, uh, resources are not adequate. Okay. And the last option probably is the most advanced, okay, especially in terms of 5G plus or even 6G, there has been a, this kind of new trend of network sensing. Okay. So that means the network may sense the user behavior, for instance, mobility, and can infer what the user wants to do in order to predict, okay, this is, you can, the user is trying to move towards the uh, hologram, and then at some time point, I need to automatically trigger uh, uh, the, the, the switching of the uh, resolutions and, and also the adaptation uh, from the network treatment. Okay, so these are all open options. Okay, so we just want to summarize what could be the possibility in order to realize such kind of, um, let's say, client-driven uh, network slice uh, switching 5G or even beyond. Okay, so currently we have implemented a simple, let's say, testing platform based on P4. So what we try to understand is uh, basically uh, in order to support such kind of, let's say, immersive media, we try to use both software-based uh, software, uh, uh, UPF versus bare metal based, uh, let's say, uh, uh, hardware based uh, um, forwarding engine. Okay, for this uh, uh, purpose, we implement uh, this kind of P4 and P4 runtime interaction, which has been embedded in the 5G service based architecture. So, so that will, uh, let's say, be triggered by the edge AF function. So, depending on which scenario we are looking at, then we have the corresponding implementation of the edge AF, which may trigger the switching of network slices between uh, 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 within the environment. But before that, uh, we need to define 
uh, uh, that could be part of the SLA between the clients and the uh, and the network. Uh, what are the possible, uh, let's say, scenarios? For instance, uh, a resolution requirement and the bandwidth requirement, so that the network could understand when um, uh, the application has uh, has switched to this level of resolution. What will be the corresponding slice that can support such kind of requirement? Okay. And we also want to uh, look at the uh, the interaction between, as a operator intent versus external client intent. Okay, so this uh, diagram basically basically shows the the the, the traditional view about uh, intent based network management. That means um, if an uh, a, 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 the mobile uh, the, the operator wants to express some intent for optimization, and then that has to go to, through the internal engine, which analyzes the risks versus the benefit before a decision is made. Okay, so this is the <coughs> entire internal business from the operator point of view. <coughs> but if we introduce the intent from the client part, apparently the client does not know the details or the internal resource utilization or condition from the network side. So once they <coughs> issue such kind of external intent, then uh, basically this has to be, uh, let's say, considered by the internal engine whether we can accommodate this um, uh, external intent. Okay, It may involve some negotiation uh, procedure, but this is completely, uh, let's say, uh, different uh, between different uh, scenarios. If you have some sort of real-time intent, then probably there's no time to negotiate anyway. Okay, But if you look at, uh, let's say, third-party uh, B2B, uh, client like CDNs, if they want to change the intent for long term uh, reconfiguration, then there might be such kind of negotiation between the underlying, let's say, MNO with the, uh, with the, this kind of, um, let's say, organization based B2B uh, clients. That's another story. But the key message here is basically uh, uh, from our uh, uh, viewpoint, the, the interaction between external client intent, no matter it is from the end users or from the um, the, the business entities, how they interact with the 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 the, uh, the, the internal intent expressed from the operator point of view. This has not this has been a gray area which has not yet received uh, much attention in the uh, in the uh, community. OK, so uh, um, uh, also a few, uh, let's say, uh, words about uh, interoperator environment. OK, so uh, basically uh, uh, the first thing is uh, we look at uh, this kind of interoperator uh, slicing across uh, peering MNOs. OK, so uh, a few years ago, uh, actually, we did this kind of, uh, let's say, activity together with um, uh, uh, King's College and, uh, and and Bristol University in terms of provisioning, uh, let's say, uh, three let's say 5G outlands, okay? And then we want to build the end-to-end -end service um, platform by leveraging the local capability uh, through a common service broker, okay? But the, the, the key is at that time that we only focus on the architect architecture level uh, uh, design, but we didn't go deep into the, the management and also the uh, the and and to orchestration as well as uh, optimization of uh, resources on different uh, autonomous stakeholders. Okay, but the key problem is if you look at the uh, different call of service requirements. Okay, some of them are uh, of the nature of concave metric, for instance bandwidth. What it means is that if you look at the end to end bandwidth let's say performance, uh, it is determined by where the bottleneck is. Okay, so in that case, uh, basically neither of these two, uh, uh, let's say, uh, MNOs should, uh, let's say, violate the minimum bandwidth requirement for that uh, network slice. Okay, this is quite straightforward. Okay, but another type of uh, um, metric, which is called additive metric, like delay. Okay, so delay, because the end-to-end -end delay consists of the local delay contributed from individual MNOs. Okay, so in that case, basically how to, let's say, allocate the delay budget across different, uh, let's say, MNOs in order to achieve, uh, let's say, end-to-end -end, uh, performance across multiple MNOs, that could be the uh, a, a big challenge, especially in terms of, let's say, AI-based, uh, let's say, um, uh, solutions for uh, for translating, for instance, the uh, the service provider or B two B clients' uh, intent or requirement into specific network configurations across different autonomous systems. 
Okay, and also in terms of the orchestration, it is still yet to be uh, let's investigated how local AI applied by individual let's say uh, let's say mobile operators can interact with each other in order to enable interoperator orchestration for both end-to-end -end service assurance and also the optimality across individual resource utilizations. Okay, and then we also have another scenario of interoperator uh, 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 cooperation, which is to integrate satellite uh, communication into uh, into five G. Okay, so uh, um, uh, not a long time ago, uh, both uh, Surrey University and BT were involved in this European uh, pro project, which is called Set Five G, and the main objective is to leverage geo satellite communication capabilities to take the role of five G backhaul. Okay, so that means we can use geo satellites to connect the 5G core network with multiple, let's say, remote mobile 5G, 5G mobile edges. Okay, so in that case, if you look at the the end-to-end, -end, uh, let's say, slicing scenario, we can envisage the following two possibilities. Uh, the first one is quite simple. That means depending on uh, a no matter. Uh, uh, let's say uh, how they are, uh, the the satellite capa uh, capabilities are integrated into the end-to-end -end 5G network slices. There is only one single network management system, an MS, which is typically uh, managed by MNO. So in that case, the management functionality of the satellite resources is offloaded or outsourced to the MNO side. So in that case, basically the satellite is, uh, uh, operator is only pro, uh, providing the uh, the resources, okay, in order to jointly build the end-to-end -end slices together with the MO, but the control over these uh, slices will be offloaded to the MNO-centric uh, network management system. Okay, uh, the other scenario is uh, is the is the second one. Uh, so in that case, uh, the satellite operator may have more, let's say, controllability in its hand because the satellite has its own MM, uh, network management system. So in that case, we can see a vertical, let's say, orchestration or coordination between the terrestrial MNS, which is typically owned by MNO, against the MNS for satellite okay so in that case we don't have a central god which can uh, oversee uh, the end-to-end resource utilization but that will require the negotiation and coordination between the two peering nms uh as platforms uh, between the two uh, different parties okay and also bear in mind and in general case a satellite network can serve multiple mnos Okay, so that means although these diagrams only shows that uh, a one-to-one -one interaction between one uh, uh, satellite operator versus one MNO for uh, for building different network slices owned by that MNO, but in reality, uh, to generalize this feature, we can also think about a single satellite uh, uh, infrastructure could be shared by multiple MNOs. Okay, and different MNOs may have their own network slices, either common with each other or something unique. So that will also pose additional research challenges in how uh, the uh, the resources could be orchestrated uh, between the satellite uh, 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 channel resources versus different, uh, let's say, MNO with specific uh, uh, strategies on slicing their networks. Okay. And uh, towards the end, just a few uh, uh, takeaways. Okay, so uh, so uh, that has been a common vision that AI-driven optimization for 5G network slicing has uh, has been a common trend. Okay, then I think most probably this trend will also evolve into the into 6G when we talk about distributed AI, uh, um, uh, typically at the edge. Okay, but the key uh, challenge at this moment is how to orchestrate even within a single MNO infrastructure, uh, different resources belonging to specific network environment like run, like transport, as well as the core, and also the different time scales required for optimization different uh, for the optimization of different uh, network environment. Uh, 
Okay, and also interestingly, we look at the uh, uh, the, the client intent driven network slice switching. Okay, so how uh, we can harmonize uh, this kind of uh, in the intentional way, the, the 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 user intent or client intent versus the network policies, uh, whether it is possible to nicely resolve the tussles between the client intent versus the internal, uh, let's say, uh, the network management or control policies uh, from the operator's point of view. Okay, and also towards the end, uh, probably this is into a peer, uh, into a future uh, where we talk about interoperator. Uh, let's say uh, cooperation or orchestration in terms of end to end network slicing, we look at uh, two different scenarios. Uh, one is the homogeneous, uh, let's say, uh, period between MNOs and how you can, uh, let's say, uh, um, distribute this kind of, let's say, uh, cost budget across different, um, uh, uh, let's say, participants by taking into account the, 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 the nature of different, uh, uh, let's say, uh, cost metrics, either is bandwidth requirement, which is concave, uh, or uh, end to end delay, which could be additive. Okay, we also let look at uh, uh, a, little, a little bit about the integration of uh, satellite uh, um, uh, communication in terms of uh, 5G network slicing. Okay, uh, I think more or less this is uh, uh, the, the, the very high level. Uh, uh, sort of, uh, let's say, idea sharing with uh, colleagues from BT. And uh, uh, also, uh, it's worth mentioning that uh, uh, the, uh, we will demonstrate the, our plat developed platform of um, uh, holographic teleportation uh, uh, application in this uh, spotlight event, which will take place on 25th of May at Ad Astro Park. Okay, as part of the let's say um, uh, demo items or impact uh, uh, impact uh, uh, acceleration uh, case studies. Uh, um, so if anyone is interested, feel free to to attend, and we can have face uh, face to face uh, discussion about about this. Yeah, thank you.